All right, so far, this is what I have. This is my EPS line art, and this is how the type blocking goes with it. But with the colored illustration on the poster, it will be a little bit more refined, right? But this is all just using the type tools. I'm going to solve some of these other issues later when I trace these into vectors and I can individually place them. For instance, I don't like how the L is perfectly horizontal and vertical. So I can angle and customize that individually later. Now for college, I'm going to show you two options. I can do the, the regular kind of wonky open path. Actually, I think, did I already do that? I think I might have. Nope, maybe not. I'm going to give myself plenty of space to draw the curve. And because my tool is on smooth, it kind of evens it out. I can move that curve where I want it. I can even deepen the curve or angle it just with the, this is an open path that I drew with the pencil tool. Drop it down a little bit. And now before I copy the college layer, which is here, I'll unlock it. First, I will select it with the type tool, copy it. I'm going to make a new layer where I paste it in. And then I am going to use the large selection tool, hold down shift so it locks its proportions and shrink it so that it will fit. So now I copy it again, so I don't have to shrink each letter individually like I did with my other two. It's good to learn from your progress. Copy it, and now I'm going to paste it on the Type on Path tool. I'm going to find the path, paste it in. All right now with this curve, I could try. What if I had the, the thicker L's? Yeah, I think that works on the curve, though it didn't work straight. The curve actually helps it because it shrinks the space for the L's. Then I could try the G as well. Eh, it's tough. I like the other G, so I'm going to leave that. Now for this, it doesn't make sense to have the C that much larger, so maybe I'll shrink that a little. Have it just a little bit larger, and maybe it makes sense to have the E just a little bit larger. It's kind of bookends. Then it might make sense to play with the kerning between the E and the G because of that tilt, and really to play with the kerning between all the letters. And now my problem is I want that C to be somewhere that works well, that can be overlapped by the illustration, like the tower overlaps that. So I think I want the C over here. So I have a few options. I can select everything and just make all of it bigger or smaller, but that will make them all the exact same. So I can also just hold down Option and increase the kerning of all of them, which works pretty well. And then I can also just take the large selection tool and adjust where it's placed. And this might be a good place to use a different typeface for the O. So if I try the mark, so that O is kind of a funky, much wider O, takes up more space. If I play with its kerning differently. You know, how might that work? I'll have to modify it, but I'll show you how I do that. All right, 
So as weird as this is, I think this is a good step. Now, if you want cleaner paths to put your type on, you can always use the pen tool. I'll show you that quickly. Make a curve there. You can make sure it's lined up. Hold down, hold and, and draw out. Hold down shift to keep it at a 45 degree angle. Right? And then I can turn the path off. I have an empty path like that. And then I can do the type on path tool on a, a very even curve. And then I can even copy and paste. This is what's so great about the type tools. I can always copy and paste the content I have with the typefaces, with the font choices, with the kerning. And then I can modify using the large selection tool and adjust it in a variety of ways. So maybe if I really flatten the letters, right, that might look a little bit better. See what this looks like. So it's nice to have options. And I think probably something that splits the difference is the way to go. So I'm going to use the large selection tool here. And I'm just going to shrink it up a little bit, not holding down shift. And then tilt it a little bit. Kind of fitting my blocking sketch. I can even use the large selection tool just to stretch it out. So you have a lot of options, not just the kerning, not just the typefaces you choose. Lots and lots of options. So I like this. So now while it's still a type tool, I'm going to shrink the L's a little bit. Just them. And decrease the kerning between them but increase their kerning on the other sides. I'll maybe decrease that one. So just kind of looking at everything and then evening it out over and over again. This is what we do when we're typesetting. Good. Time to save it. Northeast Lakeview College, very readable. Let's see it without the sketch. Yeah, that's fun. Now we need to customize it. I want to change the N a little bit. I want to change the L a little bit. I want to change the C a little bit. It's a little too closed. I want to change that O. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to turn off. I'm not going to delete them. I'm just going to turn off the eyeball of all these layers I'm not using all these preparatory layers, but it's good to keep them there because the type tools are helpful. And now for these type layers that I am using, I want to make duplicates of them. This is me being extra careful, but extra careful is helpful. So I have all these different versions. I just turn on the, the versions I want to use. OK, so I'll start with college since I just did that. I'm going to duplicate it. Right now, it's type. So it's locked to a type typeface that has to be downloaded on the computer for the computer to be able to show it. So I am going to select it all just that whole layer, and then hit Command C, and then make a new layer, lock the one I just selected and turn it off. And then on the new layer, I'm going to say edit paste in place. So I just made a duplicate of it. It's just not as easy as hitting Command J. Command J does not work in Illustrator. Now I'm going to right click on the line underneath it. And I get this beautiful, beautiful option that is create outlines. This is just like outlining strokes. When I say create outlines, I can no longer edit it as type. 
It's not like a word processor anymore. Instead, now they are just individual vector shapes. But that is a beautiful thing because now I can make the L's look slightly different than each other just by redrawing with the pencil tool. And I can bend them. And you can spend a lot of time modifying your type. But I just want you to be aware how to work with it. And really, all I want to do, this is something I'll do a lot to modify type. I'll just use the lasso and take one edge of the type like this. And then use the small selection tool to move those anchor points a little bit. So I just slimmed it down. Then I can take this whole, this whole letter and I can move it and I can grow it and I can adjust it exactly like I want. And ultimately I can redraw it any way I want using the pencil tool. So Limitless possibilities. I need to do that with my other ones as well. So what's next? Uh, let's do Lakeview. So I unlock it. I select it all. I hit Command C to copy it. I lock it, turn it off, make a new layer, and then do Edit Paste in Place. And now right click on the line underneath the type and say create outlines it can be hard to get to that create outlines option so i always duplicate it and then first when it comes in when i see the line i don't do anything else i just right click and say create outlines and then lastly with the northeast unlock it select the whole layer using the little tab there Hit Command C, lock that layer, turn it off, make a new layer at the top, then say Edit, Paste in Place, and then as soon as it comes in, you'll see the line underneath it, the Type on Path. Right click on that and say Create Outlines. Very, very nice. Okay, now just to, to fit everything on the artboard, I'm going to unlock those three text layers and my spot illustration layer. I'm going to use the large selection tool to select all of them, just draw a box around them, and then just hold down shift and option to shrink them all. Doesn't matter because it's a vector, but now this gives me some nice space to see it. And now I just have vector type that I can modify. What's the first thing I want to do? I don't need to worry about cutting it out because the spot illustration is going to go on top of it. But I do want to worry about the shape and the sizes of these. So here's one trick. If I want to thin out this O, which I do want to do, I'm going to select it with the small selection tool, use the large selection tool, and maybe move it a little bit. But if I want to thin it out, instead of having to redraw it, what can I do? I can give it a stroke. But I'm going to give it a white stroke. And I'm going to choose the size of that stroke to thin it out, like so. Then I'm going to say object, this takes all of our vector skills and puts them together, object path and outline stroke. Now that stroke is outlined on top of the black shape that's underneath it. So then once they're all selected, whoops, just all the O's are selected, then I can exclude one from the other. I need to select all of them, so I'm going to open up to the O's. i got to find that stroke. Hmm. Oh, because I'm using the large selection tool. Come on. And I want to outline the stroke. It forgot that I outlined the stroke, or I undid it. So let me redo it. 
felt like that.